In this video, we're just the ideas of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, which are ways to characterize what a matrix does, but it's also the important things we will need to be able to solve systems of differential equations that involve matrices. So if I have a, a square matrix A, an eigenvector of A is a direction or a vector in which the matrix acts like scalar multiplication. That is, it is a vector V where there exists a constant lambda so that a times v equals lambda times v, applying the matrix to v is the same way to multiplying v by the constant lambda. And lambda is the traditional letter used for these numbers, which are called eigenvalues. So in this case, lambda is the eigenvalue, and it has corresponding eigenvector v. We talk about the vector corresponding to the value or vice versa, but they correspond to each other. Now you might say, well, this is easy. Let me just take V to be zero. Then this works for every Lambda. But the key thing is I want this to be a non zero vector where this happens. Because zero makes things too easy. I want to actually know what's going on here. It means I want to look at non zero vectors that have this property. We want to find these. And it turns out it's easier to find eigenvalues than to find eigenvectors. What we can do is then use that we found the eigenvalues to then get to the eigenvectors afterwards. How do we do this? Well, we know that the eigenvalue eigenvector pair is characterized by a applied to v equals lambda applied to v, or lambda times v in this case. Now we can rewrite this lambda v as lambda times i times v, because the animation does nothing there. And I can rearrange this equation. Now this is a system of equations. I could just solve it out to get the components of v, but there's a more algorithmic way to go about it. Let me move the lambda iv to the other side and get that I want a minus lambda i, all applied to vector v, needs to be zero. Now this is a homogeneous system of equations, so we can work out what's going on here. We can try to figure out when we have solutions to this homogeneous system. Now we know zero always works, but I'm looking for non-zero solutions to this equation. So what does that mean? Well, if a minus lambda i were invertible, then there's only one solution and it's zero. So in order to have a chance to find an eigenvalue, to find an eigenvalue, we need this matrix A minus lambda I to be not invertible. And how do we characterize that? Well, you can characterize it with like independence of rows or the rank or any of these things. But the easiest one to look at is if the matrix is not invertible, its determinant must be zero. So what we actually want to look at is look at when the determinant of a minus lambda i equals zero. And this is the main thing we're looking at to find eigenvalues. I'm looking at this equation, I want to solve it for lambda. These solutions will be eigenvalues. So great, now we gotta figure out what that equation there looks like in terms of lambda, this determinant equation here. What does it look like and can we actually solve it? It turns out it's something pretty simple that we know how to deal with. Let's take a two-way two matrix here and figure out what does determinant a minus lambda i look like for this matrix. Well, I can look at just now what I want to look at is a minus lambda i. This will be 4, 3, minus 2, minus 1, minus lambda times identity matrix, 1, 0, 0, 1. I can put the lambda inside to get minus lambda 0, 0, lambda, and I can combine the matrices. I get 4 minus lambda, 3 minus 2 minus 1 minus lambda. And now that this is 2 by 2, I can take the determinant. The determinant of a minus lambda i will equal 4 minus lambda, negative 1 minus lambda, and then minus 3 times minus 2, or plus 6. So expanding this out, I get a negative 4, I get a plus lambda, I get a minus 4 lambda, and a plus lambda squared, and a plus 6 which is lambda squared minus three lambda plus two, which factors as lambda minus one, lambda minus two. That means our eigenvalues will be one and two, but the important thing is here, this is a quadratic polynomial. Even if it didn't factor super nicely, I could still find the roots and find the solutions because I have the quadratic formula. Now this being a quadratic, it's being a two by two matrix, but in any case, you will always get a polynomial here that gives us a way to try to find these eigenvalues. The straightforward idea here is the following. You define the characteristic polynomial matrix to be the polynomial lambda 
given by determinant of a minus lambda i. This will always be a polynomial, and the roots of this polynomial are the eigenvalues of the matrix A, and that's the key point. So for a given matrix, you can find the characteristic polynomial by just taking determinant A minus lambda I, working it all out, getting to the polynomial that you get, and the roots of that polynomial will be the eigenvalues of the matrix. Now a couple points on this. So if A is an n by n matrix, this will always be an nth degree polynomial. So for two by two, you get a quadratic, which you always know how to solve. For three by three and up, you'll get more complicated polynomials, but if you can find the roots, those will give you the eigenvalues of this matrix. And again, we find these roots, we get eigenvalues, and that characterizes what the matrix is gonna do. So that's the idea of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, what they do, where they come from, and how we can write the characteristic polynomials to be able to find eigenvalues of our given matrix. It'll be super important when we get back to differential equations because this is going to determine how the solution behaves to a given system is going to be derived from these eigenvalues and eigenvectors that we'll cover in the future.